Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be upgrading my Daikin Aroma F35 with some new propellers and a new receiver. So previously I had this so previously I had this little FHSS receiver in my quad and it worked okay but the problem is this is the only FHSS transmitter that I have right here and so one of the little plugs came off of my receiver mid-flight somehow and so I decided that it was just time to upgrade the receiver so instead of using this FHSS receiver I'm gonna upgrade to this Beta FPV FR Sky XM Plus receiver which is an S Bus mini receiver and so yeah so we're just gonna open this up first and it is a very tiny receiver but it has two antennas so I'll put a diagram on the screen but basically this pin right here is S bus the middle one is voltage and the bottom one is ground and that's just in relation to having this spine plug on the top right here's the plug that came stock on the Daytona Roma F35 as you can see the ground wire does actually come over to the left pin so that even though it's the second wire it's the first pin so just to pay attention to that if you're doing this yourself on your own build and then here's the diagram that I showed from my initial video for the Diatone Roma so it's the middle four pins so you can see it's 5 volt then ground then RX1 and then TX1 but we actually don't even need TX1 we just need 5 volts ground RX1 and that's it so this white wire right here actually doesn't matter I'm actually going to solder this connector onto the receiver and as you can see I cut off the last wire because we only need the first three since we don't need TX1. So that will just plug into there with the receiver on the end and that should be good to go. So I'm just going to go solder this real quick now that I've showed you guys the layout for the wiring and then you can kind of see a visual on how I actually did it. Alright so first I'm just going to tin these pads. So with the bind plug in this direction, which is top left for me, this means that the S bus pad is the very left, and so that's this wire right here. Then the second pad right here is voltage, which is the yellow wire for me. And then the last wire is ground. Alright, so now I can plug this into the drone like that and now we can look at the wiring layout so the first pin on here is ground so it goes from right there to the first one and that's ground and this last pin on the receiver is ground second one is voltage so red voltage on the second pin right there and you can see that that's yellow on here and that's going to the middle pad on the receiver which is voltage and then the third wire is rx and that's the third pin on the connector and that goes to the black wire on the receiver, which is the first pad, and that is the S bus pad. So this should be the correct configuration. Um, of course, all I did was refer to the wiring diagram, so if you do this yourself, just be cautious on the wiring. All right, so I did just double check the wiring off camera just to make sure, and you always wanna double check it, and it does look correct. So now we're, we can plug the battery in and see if it's working. So here's the battery. And we do have a flashing red light right here, which means the receiver is looking for a connection. So we just need to basically bind it and then we should be good to go. So since this is a serial based receiver, you want to make sure in beta flight that under the receiver tab, you have a receiver under serial via UART and then the S bus selected, which is what I have. And then as you can see, when the receiver is powered on, but not connected to anything, it just flashes red like this. Alright, so in my Radio Master TX12, I have this model called D Roma F35 for Dytone Roma F35. And so if I go to Model and then press Page and scroll down in my setup menu, and then you want to make sure that it's in multi mode, and then you want to make sure on your FR Sky X, and then this receiver is actually D16. So we have it in D16. Now, if I power on the quad while holding the little bind button in the corner of the receiver, which is right there. You'll see that the receiver light actually just has a solid green and red light, which means it's in bind mode. And so all you have to do is take your transmitter and click the bind button or power it on and click the bind button however your transmitter works. In this case, we're going to use 1 through 8 telemetry off in terms of channels. So the light started flashing, so that means it's, it's receiving signal and it's binding. And then my transmitter stopped beeping, 
All you have to do is power cycle the quad now, so just unplug whatever's powering it and plug it back in. And give it a few seconds, and then once it connects to the controller, it should turn solid green. So I don't know if you could see it right there, but the receiver is solid green and occasionally flashing, which means it is talking to the transmitter. And then since I already had my quad plugged into the computer, I just opened up Betaflight. And of course I have the serial and SBUS options selected like I showed you guys before. And now the channels move with the drone on the screen, which means that it is connected and working. And even the switches work too. Now, if your switches aren't working, one thing I would try real quick, which is different if you're new to OpenTX, is you have to go to mixes. And basically, on a regular transmitter, all mixes are inputs as well. So if you have no in mixes here, that means that nothing is going to happen on the screen. So right here, I'm telling it that the aileron, elevator, and throttle are all controlled by their corresponding sticks. And therefore, they should also create movements on the channels that they correspond to. So if you have nothing here, you're going to want to just literally just click it. And then we'll bring you into a menu and then you just select whatever surface you're trying to control. So in this case, it's aileron or a roll. And sometimes it even automatically just does it for you. And then you could just press return and then it should bring you back to this menu. And you do that for all the channels and all the switches and all the different gimbals. And you should have movement. So that's basically it in terms of receiver setup. We have this receiver working. So basically the last thing I have to do is just get this mounted inside of the drone. And then I'm actually going to replace the propellers like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And we should be good to go. So all I'm gonna do to protect the receiver is I'm going to actually just put this piece of heat shrink around it and I'm not gonna shrink it all of the way, but mo at least enough to keep it snug on the receiver. And then I'm actually gonna like glue Velcro onto the back side of this so that I can just mount it on top of here like I had my last receiver. As you can see, I have adhesive Velcro sitting right up here. You might not be able to see it, but it's right there. So the receiver right here has a nice piece of heat shrink with Velcro on the other side right here. And so I can just stick that on the top right here and then we have these two antenna right here which I can just pull through and of course before I was just kind of tying the antennas around the back just so that they didn't get in the way of the propellers but then I just looked in the box and I realized that that they actually had these two plastic pieces that were intended to be pushed into these 3d printed mounts right here so I could just put the antennas through here as you could probably see these propellers are all chewed up some of them are even half cracked and stuff but now that I know how to fly, I'm going to put these Beta FPV gem fan propellers on. And these are the same ones. They're both 3520s, three blade propellers. So old propellers off. And we are running a props in configuration. And then we'll open up these propellers. So like I said, these are Beta FPV gem fan propellers. And then they include these little adapters for smaller shafts, but we don't need those. All right, so the propellers are on. So with that being said, let's go take this out for, I guess, a remade in flight. All right, so I'm flying with my TX-16, of course, and then my Eoshin EV800DM goggles. And then in terms of battery, we're using this 1550 100C 4S battery by Ovonic. So I'm basically just going to be doing a very basic range test on the XM Plus. All I'm going to do is fly a certain distance and then I'll use Google Maps and tell you guys on the screen. But judging the quality and connection of FR Sky, the distance that I'm going to go, we probably won't even have any issues. Welcome to Open TX. Alright, I'm going to try arming it for the first time with this receiver. All right, so I figured out why that happened. Um, I must not have been paying attention and someone put the rear props on backwards, so um, yeah. All right, another test flight. Here we go. All right, it sounds a lot cleaner than it did before, so let's take it out for an FPV flight now. I'm not gonna do an official range test on the XM Plus, but we're just gonna kinda get a good sense of how far you can go in a close range area, especially with different elevation and terrain. So yeah. Already, these propellers feel amazing. They're so smooth. There's like no oscillation. I can't really see my RSSI that well. It looks okay. It's funny, this camera has a lot of blue and greens in it, in its color kind of interesting oh there's a tree <laughs> um yeah these trees weren't as grown as they are now since i last flew so there's a little bit more of a confined space here 
Let's try going this way. Do a little flip over the house here and dive down. That's a lot of speed. I need to lose some altitude here. All right. Go through these two trees. All right, let's do a little bit of a range test here. Obviously my video is probably gonna go out before my control link, but let me see if I can go farther than I have before. Now, of course, this is kind of a hill, so I need to stay a little bit higher, but I'm also gonna get kind of close to the road or to the side of the road here. So if I fail safe, I don't hit the concrete. But because I'm a little higher up, it's working pretty well. My signal is of course gonna go out. See, my signal is getting really bad, my video signal. All right, so I don't know how far that was. I'll put it on the screen. I'm gonna use Google Maps to kind of translate my distance based off of how far I know I'm going. So that's run number one. <laughs> I'll see if I can go farther on a second attempt. But first, backflip. And a dive. Yeah, this quad's really fast. And these propellers are, like I said before, they're so smooth and they're amazing. So if you have a three and a half inch quad, especially the Roma F35, I would recommend these uh, 3520s from Beta FPV and made by Gemfan. Very nice. All right. I probably shouldn't be going this fast because I'm going to lose signal here really quickly and I'm not going to be able to see. Oh, there's a car. I'm coming back. See, I don't want to go super high up, but I know that's going to give me the best reception. That's the thing. Oh, okay. Oh, there's some signal, video signal loss. Alright, so I probably won't be able to test... <laughs> Whoa, that was close. I probably won't be able to test the full length of this unless I'm in like an open field, so maybe I'll do that in another video, but this is just kind of an initial upgrade of the Roma F35. Let's go this way again. These trees are really thick over here, so I don't really dare to go between them. I mean, this is an okay gap right here. I haven't really done a, a tree run with this thing yet, just because it's so sensitive. But I might be able to do it with this transmitter, go through these trees. I also don't want to hit like a stick. Oh, I have so much better control with the TX-12 than I did before with my FHSS transmitter. I could do a whole run right now through these trees. Oh, I'm getting close to the ground here. I need to make it through these trees. Oh, I snagged a branch, but I made it out. A double flip there. Or I guess it's a roll, not a flip. This would be a flip. Actually, I wonder if I would have good <laughs> video back here. Oh, I hit something. <laughs> so yeah, that was my second take on, I guess, refining this quad. Um, having the nice receiver in the nice quad actually helped a lot. And a lot of the little movements were just so much easier to perform, like going through the trees and stuff. So that was really fun. And then these propellers by Gemfan, sold by Beta FPV, are really amazing. They felt really good, on, especially on this tune. So of course, we, I didn't do an official full range test, but as you could see, because there's kind of a little hill back there, um, it actually did work out pretty well for close range with tons of trees and things to interfere with the signal. So like I said, it did work out overall pretty well for my environment, especially with just the stock antenna on the TX-12. So just like how this propeller and the receiver in here were from Beta FPV, I have a ton of other components for my last video that I'm going to be using to upgrade my other quads and even building other ones. So stay tuned for that. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you aren't subscribed already. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.